Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, we are making an amazing loud air horn out of a Pringles can. In fact, we're gonna make three different versions of this horn. The absolute best part is the majority of the parts are actually all things that you can recycle. The key is a Pringles can, some tubes, a plastic water bottle, and some kind of a rubber or elastic device that you can use as a diaphragm for your horn. Our first step here today is making a mouthpiece, and we're gonna do that with one of these Arrowhead water bottles, which you can get a different kind of a bottle. The key is just finding one that actually has a spout coming out the top. We're gonna take that and cut that top right off just below the neck. If you don't have a Pringles can, check out my other video I did before using a water bottle and a balloon to make a similar kind of a horn. You wanna make sure the opening at the spout of that top is as wide as you can be, so you wanna poke out any of the extra little plastic pieces in there. Then go back to the Pringles can and about a third of the way down from the open end, you're gonna make a hole big enough to fit that neck piece through. You're gonna fit the neck piece through from the inside of the can. The threads will be sticking through, but that extra little bit from the neck is actually gonna hold it from coming all the way back through. I then just took a little box cutter and went back and cleaned up some of the loose pieces of can that were sticking up around the edge of the neck there. Once that's done, you can go ahead and screw the cap back on. You've now just made a very effective mouthpiece for blowing your horn. As I twist this around, I notice it's a little bit loose and there's an easy way to fix that. If it's not snug enough, go ahead and thread it back out and put a piece of tape over the hole. This will not only help you to get a better air seal, but it will also help to prevent from moisture seeping into the cardboard side of the can. Once that's done, go back with your box cutter and cut the hole back out again. Now you can reassemble the mouthpiece and it should be pretty secure. For this next part, you can use just about any size tube that'll fit down inside. I'm gonna start with a half inch piece of PVC and I'm gonna cut a piece that's about one and a half times the length of the Pringles can itself. Once that's done, I'm gonna make a hole pretty much in the center of the bottom of the can, the exact same size as the PVC that I'm using. This next part's gonna use the tape again. In fact, you can use duct tape or any other kind of thick tape. I'm actually gonna use Gorilla Tape. We're gonna cover this hole again and do just like we did before. Once that's done, I'm gonna slide the tube back inside the can, make sure it's set all the way to the bottom, and rest it firmly against my workshop bench. Then, taking a pencil, I'm just gonna draw a line right around the top. Grabbing the tape again, I'm gonna make a few wraps right around the tube at that line. Make sure you do it on the underside of that line so that it's inside the can. That's gonna rest against the end, making a better seal, and helping to keep your tube straight. This ends up leaving you with a perfect alignment with the tube sticking just past the end of the Pringles can, which is perfect for this purpose. In this first version of the build, I'm using a 7mm nitrile glove as the diaphragm part. I'm actually leaving just two folds of this from the wrist part of the glove itself. You can use any kind of rubber glove or other kind of a stretchable glove in place of the nitrile. It doesn't matter what type, you're just gonna come up with something a little bit thicker than a balloon. Notice I'm now taping this in place and stretching it as I go. Take a couple small pieces first and get it stretched out well. Once you're done, if you tap lightly against the rubber end or whatever you used for your diaphragm, it should make a little bit of a hollow drum kind of a sound. You need it tight, because that's gonna help hold the tube in place and make the sound that you want. So, let's give her a test run. You can actually experiment with the sound a little bit by placing your fingers on either side of the tube over the rubber diaphragm and push on it a little bit when you blow. You can experiment with the sound more by adding a bell. I used a funnel in this case, in fact it's a car oil funnel that I got from the dollar store. That turned out to be a very gratifying result. So now I'm gonna actually show you two more builds that I did with Pringles cans, but I'll show you just the variations in how I built them. We're using bigger tubes and different diaphragm material this time. Make sure to stick around to the end because I've got another little modification that can be used on all the designs. Looking at it from this angle, you can see how cutting just below the neck of the bottle leaves you a really good lip for holding this mouthpiece in place. This time I'm using a bigger tube, so I used an extra piece of tape over the metal hole, which gave me a little bit better of an air seal. I also made it a little bit thicker in my row of tape around the tube itself. This time, to get a little strangely creative, I actually used a diaphragm material made from a bald cap that I got at a costume shop. Just used a single layer, 
and let's test this one out. On the third version I built, I used a wider tube, but the plastic itself was thinner. This was just one of several tubes that was headed for the recycle bin because it was part of a broken toy. This version I also added tape to the tube, connecting it to the top. This increased the security of the tube in terms of how it handles, as well as making it a little bit more airtight. Sticking with the recycled toy theme, I actually pulled the bladder out of an old punching bag that was broken and used a single layer of that to make the diaphragm in this version. Here's a handy little modification to make your horns work a little bit more consistently. Take that original top from the Pringles can, make a hole in it just a little bit bigger than the tube for your horn, and get ready to put it back on the can. This serves a similar role to putting your two fingers beside the tube that I was showing earlier, except this way, you can have a more consistent sound time and time again. You want to make sure you get the cap seated fully back onto the can, and also make sure that the tube is aligned right in the middle of the hole. Once you're at that point, go back with some more of your tape and make sure that the lid is securely fastened onto the can. Thank you for watching. Please press like and then subscribe. There will be more dialed in DIY to come.